Give it, give it one of the peace of the Lord Jesus. I didn't turn on. We greet everyone with the peace of the Lord Jesus. Whoever is to the word of the Lord, I invite those who can to stand up. And the gospel according to Luke. Luke, New Testament. Luke chapter 14. Luke 14. From verse 16. Luke 14 from verse 16. The word says the following. Then he said to him, A certain man gave a great su supper and invited many and sent, and sent his servant at supper time to say to those who were invited, Come, for all things are now ready. But they all, with one accord, began to make excuses. They first said to him, I have bought a piece of ground, and I must go and see it. I ask you to have me excused. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I am going to test them. I ask you to have me excused. See what another said. I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. Lord, we praise you. We're thankful for your blessing, for your people. We ask that through your word you may once again bless your people, your church, in this place. We pray in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated. This text that we just finished reading speaks of the parable of the Great Supper of a certain man that is the Lord God, Almighty God, the God created of heaven and earth. He calls, He chooses, He chooses people in order for them to participate on a supper in his house, on a bank, participate on a banquet in on his land. So the people that received the invitation were people that had been chosen by that man. So that man that sent the invitation, asking that at a certain point in time there was going to be in his house and on his land on his field there was going to be a supper, a feast. He knew each one of his guests and the ones who had been invited, the ones who received the invitation also knew that man. They knew. They knew his house. They knew his land. So one knew the other. Because I can, on, can only invite someone if I know that person. And the person will receive the invitation knowing that I'm the one who invited. So there is at least a little bit of uh, knowledge. And this banquet, this supper, was a special supper was a unique supper. So the people that received the invitation were considered by that, that certain man who is represented by our Lord, created of heaven and earth. They were considered special people for him. So when I invite someone to go to my house to participate on a banquet, it is because these people that I invited, they have some a sort of intimacy and affinity with me. Isn't that true? 
you're not going to invite just about anyone to go to your house to participate in a banquet. We choose the people to be uh, in our house or not on my house. So the people that received this invitation, they have all been informed about it. They all knew. The, the invitation had no day or hour. But they knew that at a certain point in time, they were going to be informed regarding that day and of that hour. And the word tells my brethren that at the moment of the supper, that's how it's written, so on the D-day and the, or in the H hour, at the moment in, in which they were going to celebrate that great supper, a great feast, the owner of the feast sent, sent his servant to say, now is the hour, that's the moment. And you can come, the ones who have been invited, because everything is ready. All the things have been prepared. You, know, you just need to enter and participate on this feast. You don't need to pay anything for it. Because all the expenses for the feast had already been financed by the owner of that feast. So you just need to enter, eat, drink, and rejoice. So these people, they were so important because he sent yet again, uh, he redoubled his invitation. He, he invited first and then now he reinforced his invitation. Why? Because the, the owner of the feast didn't want anybody to be left out. And the desire of the Lord is the same, that no one will be left out. In the word, my brethren, says that on the moment in which he sent his servant, and his servant arrived there before the presence of his guests, the ones who have been invited, and the servant spoke to each one of the invited. He said, come, come, because everything is already prepared. And today it's not different. God, the owner, the one who is throwing out this banquet, is now once again reinforcing the invitation to each one of the guests come because everything is is already prepared. So the Lord is calling so each one of the guests may go participate on the banquet because everything is has already been prepared. The banquet has already been prepared. The garments have already been prepared. Everything is ready. But the word tells my brother that one, the servant that was sent by that man, when he arrived to the ones who had been invited, calling each one of them privately so that they would go participate on the feast, the guests, the one who have been invited, they now begin to come up with excuses. They began to reject the invitation. There was an invitation, but on the other hand, there was also an, a rejection. So you were being invited to participate in the feast. So you, are, are, we were already aware of the feast, but at the moment the feast, you said, oh, I can't go. But man, why? How? how come you can't go? And they would answer, oh, it's because now I bought a field, I bought a piece of land. So the person chooses not to go to the land of the, of the person who is throwing the party, the house of that man, which represents the Lord, creator of the heaven and earth, the kingdom of God, 
because now that person has acquired for, for himself a field, a land, and that person thinks that the field that he bought, that he has acquired, is more important, is, is more valuable than the field or the supper or the banquet that the, the Lord has prepared for him. So now he begins to give greater worth to what he has acquired more than everything that he has earned than the invitation for the great feast. So here there is an inversion of values. Man stop he leaves behind the kingdom of God to other in order to, to to go to other things. And the Bible says, Seek ye the kingdom of God and his kingdom and everything else will be added unto you. But now man leaves the kingdom of God, he rejects the kingdom for the other things. Because he was able to acquire them. Because he made an effort, he acquired. And he pays. The invitation to enter to the party to well, the invitation to get into the supper was free because the price has already been paid. Because one day Jesus on the cross of Calvary, he died for you, for me, for each one of us. Because not we go or precious stones, but with the precious blood of Jesus that you, my brother and sister, has re have received the right to be participant of the Supper of the Lamb, of the Supper of the Lord. And the Bible tells more, my brethren. I bought a piece of ground and I must go and see it. He bought it without seeing it. He paid for it without knowing what existed on that field. He doesn't know how this field, this piece of ground is. And how many people are like this today? They're inside of the church. They have received invitation. They received salvation in Christ Jesus. They have received the baptism with the Holy Spirit. They know the, the one who is throwing the party. They know there is going to be a great banquet, a great supper. They know that everything have, has already been prepared. And salvation is free because it's by grace we have freedom. It's not from you, it's a gift of God. So doesn't come from work so that nobody may glory themselves. They already know this, but in, in the age moment, the moment to enter, to participate, they don't want, they reject. Oh, they are from the church, but they bought a field for everyone uh, in the world. They bought a field. They got, bought a piece of ground. So now, I'm not going to participate on the feast because I have a piece of ground. I need. A, I have a piece of, of ground so that I, I can see to participate the field of my personal interest. It is out there. I didn't see. I need to become aware of it. So they reject the project, uh, project of God, the eternity, uh, in exchange for the things of this life. I'm, I apologize. I don't want to go to heaven. I'd rather stay with my piece of ground. I'm not going to die. In heaven. Nobody dies in heaven. But sometimes on earth, the individual thinks that it's better to live here six months, a year, 90 years, in, rather than have an eternal life with God. My father used to say, I never seen 
uh, uh, when you when you dressed up someone uh, to be buried in the past, they had no pockets because from this this place nobody brings anything to heaven. I came here naked, and I will uh, go back to to the to the ground naked. So people think that they think that that when they they depart from this world, they will bring uh, uh, luggage with things from this world. Everything, everything is is fleeting. Whatever is on earth will remain on earth, and whatever is uh, heavenly will stay there. The that person was very polite. He said, look, that was nice, but I'm not going to participate in it. I'd rather go to my piece of ground. I'd like to be excused. He rejected the, invita he rejected the invitation. And the Bible says, my brother, that there was a second one. When he the servant went to the second get invi invited. He's the second invited answered, "I have bought five yoke of oxen. Five yoke of oxen. I uh, I used to work with this. Five yoke of oxen. And now, and now that I have acquired this five yoke of oxen, the word says." I'm going to test them. So he first saw the field, the piece of ground. Now he buys five yoke of oxen. When we speak about five, we speak about five ministries. The church in which we are living today is the church of Laodicea. Laodicea. And one of the characteristics of the Church of Laodicea is when you acquire a piece of grain, ground, is because you have money. Somebody that is broke don't buy anything. If you, if you don't have any money, you don't even buy a box of matches. But if you have money, then you buy a car, a plane, and a sheep. There is nothing wrong with that. But the Church of Laodicea speaks of a ministry which is of this time. I'm rich, and I don't lack anything. I bought a, a piece of ground, and now I bought the five yoke uh, of oxen. Now I'm going to put the yoke, the oxen, on the field. Remember the rich uh, young man? He rejected the invitation because he was rich. The Bible speaks of a man also that uh, he, I filled my. Uh, filled up my silo and I'm going to build more silos. Now I'm going to drink and rejoice. And Jesus says, he's foolish. If today uh, your soul is requested, what is going to happen? What is the worth of your form and your money? What will, will it, it contribute for you to enter into eternity? Jesus says something interesting regarding the rich people. He said it's easier to man to go through the the hole of a needle than a rich man to enter to the kingdom of God. He's a camel to go through the hole of a needle. But Jesus said, for man it is impossible, but for God everything is possible. So he's speaking about the rich because the rich thinks that he doesn't need anything. Oh, I'm rich, I don't like anything. I have everything. I have a ministry, I have everything. But he is poor. He is cursed, miserable, blind, and naked. He is poor. He is cursed. It's very serious words. word, right? He has fallen from grace. If you are uh, on grace, you have fallen from grace, you have been cursed, you lost the grace. 
we lost the opportunity of being saved. You were, but no, you no longer are because you lost the position. Because I made a choice. Because I have rejected the invitation. That's what it is. I bought five yoke of oxen, and now I'm going to test it. Whoever uh, worked on a farm knows that if you pick up an oxen, if you throw a yoke on top of it, and you put the plow, you tie it on, on ropes and put a plow on it. Today, nobody uses it because you have a, a tractor truck. But in the past, they used to do this and used to to build it out of wood, and you would work on the field. So man has uh, selfish personal interests, and we are living this moment of the church because the church is only concerned with the material things than with the spiritual things. Only um, they are more worried with prosperity than with eternity. Oh, give 100 to Jesus because you're going to receive a million. So everybody gives money. Oh, the pastor is deceiving. No, the pastor is not deceiving anyone. The person does this. You, you know why? <coughs> because that's their own selfish interest. That's what it is. They are, they are saying what they actually wanted. It is not the... It's not the responsibility of the, the one who is making the offer is the one who is making the bet. And the Lord prospered. The Lord opens the doors. The Lord blesses. You, you pick up people in the Bible that were greatly blessed by God. Job, Abraham, David. They had a lot of money. But they never placed their heart on their riches. They never, they never rejected the project of God. In, in, instead of, uh, you know, to keep their uh, ground for God, the 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 presence of the blessing was most, more important than the blessings. Today, people are just running after the blessings, and they don't want, don't want the one who blesses. I bought five yoke of oxen. And now I've acquired what I wanted. What I was seeking, I already have. I don't need anything else. My business is not returning. I don't want to get into heaven. What I wanted was a field and five yoke of oxen. And that's what I have already have. five yoke of oxen and represent, represents five powers. The first power is political power. It's not the politics that we see in the world. The politics and selfish interests is the convenience, is the articulations in order to do well in life is the agreements under the cover and many agreements that the police should not even know about. So this intrigue, this scams in order to end up well in life and I pay a higher price for it. I, I wanted uh, political power I paid in order to become a leader. I paid in order to aggregate, to be a leader. I paid for it in the past. Now, now I'm going to taste it. Since I'm already paid for it, now I'm going to try it. And that's what I want. The second power. Social power. The bread, Jesus said that I'm um, the living bread that came down from heaven. But people are seeking the bread from the ground, the, the bread from the bakery. Jesus said, my bread, 
I never seen a man, uh, the righteous one, and protected and his descendants begging for bread. On the Sermon of the Mountain, Jesus looks to the birds. They do not gather. They don't gather into silos, but however, the Lord feed them. Aren't you much more valuable than them? men and women of little faith. Even the, the, each string of your hair are numbered. And a leaf does not fall without fall from a tree without the permission of God. This is the importance of those the ones who have been invited. It was so important for God that God knows things that you don't know. I want to know. I want to know if anyone here knows how many strings of hair you of hair you have in your head. But but God knows how many strings of hair each one has in their head. What is insignificant information, right? But it speaks of thoughts. God knows all your thoughts. God's thoughts are greater than ours. The path of the Lord. They are greater than ours in our path. That's why give your path to the Lord, trust in Him. And He has a greater project than a piece of ground of your selfish interests, of the yoke of oxen, of the business of this life. It's not more important the kingdom of God that He has prepared for you before the foundation of the world. The social power. People like this to receive uh, humanitarian help. Oh, they want a basket of groceries. Oh, oh poor people want to help everyone. The, what you know? What the Bible uh, says: Give to whoever asks, and do not. If somebody asks ask you uh, to lend money, then you, you, you're supposed to give it. If you are lend, if you're giving it, you're doing nothing more than your obligation. I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was drunk, I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was naked and you gave me clothing. But uh, they are not. It is not the good works that are going to lead me to eternity, and I cannot find. Lord, I will reject the invitation of the supper, the invitation to enter the kingdom of God. I'm going to leave Jesus to the side, pleading for the blood of Jesus aside, or just pray it aside, because I'm a very good person, because I help the poor. I do good deeds. I help everyone. So then I'm going to heaven. I don't need God in my life because I'm going to have. I'm, I'm such a good person. Brother and sister, this thing doesn't exist. Take this out of your head. No one's going to heaven because uh, you're, uh, you're a good person. You go to heaven if you accept the invitation from the Father. If you do not reject it, the plan or the project of God for your life, you are not going to heaven. If you recognize Jesus of only sufficient Savior, you are not going to have him. If you, if you understand that your sins have been washed in the blood of Jesus and that He is the door to lead you to eternity, then you go to heaven. Nobody's going to go in, through any other means because there is no other man on heaven and under heaven and on earth that Help will help us to be saved. Salvation is only through Jesus. That's it. So do not exchange the salvation, the wedding of the Lamb, for for a piece of uh, ground, for yoke of oxen, for your human reason, for your so social life, for your good works. Now, let's go to the third one, the economical. 
the economical power. The Bible speaks about uh, speaks about money. That is very interesting. That money answers to everything. Have you seen this? The money answers to everything. So money is solution to everything here on this life. But it is not solution to eternal life. So economical power. So culture. Oh, I'm a very cultured person. I'm very intelligent. Amen. Glory to God. That's very good. With greater knowledge, the more knowledge, the better. Knowledge does not take up space. If you can speak a thousand languages, it will be wonderful. If you can speak the tongue of the angels, even better. But Paul says something very interesting. Even if I spoke the tongue of the angels and the man of men, but if, he, if I didn't love the love of God, I would be like a person, like a bell that timbers. Even if I had all my money, all my fortune, and distributed it to the poor, and gave my body to be burned, but if I didn't have the love of God, it would all have no purpose for me. It is there in Corinthians, the book of Corinthians. Do you understand? What is important is that you do not reject it. Do not reject this love. God says, God loved the world in such a way that He sent His only Son so that whoever believes in Him may not perish, may not die, but have eternal life. That's what, I'm, what we are talking about tonight. The invitation the Lord made for your life, for my life, is because He loves you. And He wants to save you. May you not exchange this love, this blessing, of living forever with Him in eternity, with him, on His kingdom, on third heaven, on heaven, on the heaven of heavens. Do not exchange this for the things of this life, for a piece of ground, for a yoke of oxen. There is a man in the Bible called Elisha. When Elias passed by, he invited him to participate in the project of God. He was working on the field with. Uh, yoke of oxen. You know what he did? He killed the oxen. He took the plow that was made of wood and made a uh, bonfire and burned everything. And you know why? Because he didn't know that these things would interfere with the project of God for his life. So he leaves the meat, the flesh, the human reason, the things of this world, the things of this life. And he exchanged it for the project of God, which is eternal. And that's what the Lord wants us to do at this moment of the supper, in the moment in which we are living, so that nobody will be left out of the supper. And the last one is the religious power. Religion is a great problem. We're inside of a temple speaking about this. Oh. Some people may say, I want to have a religion. You don't need to have a religion. We don't need to have a religion. You need to have an experience with Jesus. You don't need a religion. If you pick up the Bible, you see what, what the religious did. The Pharisees, they stayed, they stayed at the door. The religious, they, he was, the Pharisee, they were very religious. They stay at the door. They do not enter, but they also do not allow you to enter. The religious he came to the people and said, when Pilate went there to speak, to, to, to choose between Christ and Barabbas, they chose Barabbas. No, release Barabbas, not Jesus. Crucify him. That's what the religious were saying. Barabbas. I'm a very religious person. Paul was a very religious man. It is in the Bible. Chapter 9 of Acts. What did he do, Paul? He was so religious. He was 
persecuted of the Christians and Christ. In order for Jesus to save him, he had to take him out of religion. You know that? So a bright light shone upon him at noon and he fell to the ground and he said, Who are you, Lord? He was a religious man. He didn't know who Jesus was. There are so many religious people that don't know Jesus. And he kept asking, Who are you, Lord? Who are you, Lord? And Jesus answered, I'm the, the Jesus that you persecute. Paul was a man that was very educated, was a prince, that was very religious, was reasoned by the feet of Gamaliel. He knew the Old Testament in an amazing way, but he, did, he didn't know Christ. He didn't know the plan, the project of God for his life. And you know what? God spoke to Paul. It's hard for you to fight against the Christian. There are people that are going astray from the project of God because of your religiousness. He was, like we say in the Brazil, he, he was going against the current. He was fighting the project of God for his life. And many people are like this. They are fighting the project of God for their lives. And these people that rejected the invitation, they were doing this. They were rejecting. They were fighting. They were saying, I don't want. And the Lord was persisting. You see the persistence of, of God in those verses. So firstly, they make a decision. I bought a piece of ground. Now I'm going to go out and see, and see this ground, this field. Now I need to put something on this, this field. So I'm going to buy five yoke of oxen. Now I'm going to test those, those oxen. And third, I got married. So um, I asked to be excused. That's how it is, to go straight from the project God has for your in my life. Firstly, I want to see, then I want to try, so then I'm going to unite to this thing, this power, human, terrestrial, rational, animal, diabolical, that is going to push me astray from the project that God has for you, for my, for your life. A certain man made a great supper and invited many and sent his servant at supper time to say to those who were invited. Now, at the supper, the servants are saying, the servant of the Lord is saying, the Holy Spirit is saying, the Spirit and the church say, come, and whoever hears it, say, come, and and whoever wants may receive freely the water of life. And Jesus comes to the multitude and says, Come upon me, all the ones who are tired and discouraged, and I will bring relief to you. Take upon me my yoke and learn from me that I am humble of heart, and that you find rest for your souls. My brethren, the Lord wants to give rest to our soul. God has a project, a project of eternity. There's nothing wrong with you have properties, being rich. There's nothing wrong with that. But do not place your heart on your riches, on your properties, on your culture, on your religiousness, because it is completely worthless. Do not reject the project of God for your life, my brother and sister. If you are here tonight, it is because you are one of those who have been invited. The Lord is saying to you, uh, tonight, at this moment, hey, you can come. There's no restriction here. God does not choose a person of an, uh, another in anywhere. God does not make choose a person of another. His desire is that the house be, may be full. Not this house, it's the house in heaven. It's the inhabitant in eternity. A place where there's no death, there's crying and pain or sadness. I will see a new land, a new Jerusalem. That's what the Lord has prepared for you, my brother and sister. 
while their streets are made of gold. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Come. You can come, my brother and sister, because everything is prepared. Jesus. The Lord has shown a woman that was here with us tonight. She has worked very hard to be to bring light to her home, to her family members. And she has used the resources they are very harsh, they are difficult, that hurt, that cause wounds. Many times we use the Bible in the wrong way. The Bible is like a ram, that you're supposed to eat it completely, a lamb. And sometimes we pick up verses from the Bible and we want from the from the verses in this Bible and this understanding we have for from a few verses of the Bible we may bring with our own efforts or conduct 
our family members, our loved ones, into the presence of the Lord. And the Bible said, "My brother and sister is not by force or violence, but but the Holy Spirit." Says the Lord. The project of God is a project that is complete. It's not you, the person who is going to convince your family to come into the presence of the Lord. The one who convinces men of sin and of the mistakes to make a stand in their lives is not you. Is no man. Is through the Holy Spirit. The fire that you need is the presence of the Holy Spirit in our life, and with with the Holy Spirit, when you open up your mouth, the Lord will bless your entire home. <coughs> the Bible, in the Book of Psalms, speaks of this, right? Remember the verse I'm trying to remember here. My mind is failing me. Light for my feet is your, your lamp is light for my path. And that Jesus is the light that you need. He's going to be given freely. You don't need to make an effort for this. Remember the two women in the Bible, Martha and Mary. One was tired and anxious, and the other chose the better part. What is the better part? Is to be at Uh, the feet of Jesus, my sister, stay at the feet of Jesus. And he will resolve all your problems. The Lord has also shown a man. He came here tonight. He was invited. He was guided to this place. And he has a difficulty to walk in the presence of the Lord. That's why he was guided to this place. I don't know what happened in his life. If there was an accident or something that happened in the past. When I say an accident, I'm speaking about his spiritual life. That problem that may have occurred during his spiritual walk that is now preventing you from walking in the presence of the Lord. But the Lord has shown that tonight the Lord is, op is operating on the life of this person and he will be able to stand up and walk in the presence of the Lord. It is the Lord who has done this. Sometimes we go astray from the project of God because of man. I want to tell you one thing. Is your commitment with man? Oh, I trusted. I'm going to mention another verse in the Bible. Curse is the man who trusts in another man. But there's another verse that said, who man uh, complains about? Man blame, uh, he complains about his own sins. Sometimes we make a decision to buy a piece of ground to go out because we think that that place is better. Many times we even do this. We even give an excuse because of this. And the, the decision, decision is yours. The one who died on the cross of Calvary was Jesus. The one who saved you was Jesus. The blood of Jesus is what redeemed you of all your sins and only through him and only through Jesus you will be able to enter into eternity you don't need any man you cannot allow any man to interfere on the project of God for your life amen let us stand up I will praise you we thank you for this moment of fellowship we will ask the Lord that all our adoration praise and glorification may come into your eternal grace of a sweet smell. Give a wake of peace, a wake of blessed, protected by you, Lord, delivering us from any evil, pre preparing us, Lord, for this meeting with you in your eternity. Take our people in peace with their home under your protection, we pray in the holy name of Jesus. In your name we say the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our good and eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit with the people of God, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The brethren may be seated. You can be seated. You, my brother and sister, who are here, you are welcome to this place. We have service every Tuesday and Thursday at 8 p.m. We have Saturday at 6 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, my 
brother and sister can participate on Saturday night and Sunday night, you are invited. You are all welcome to come more times. On Sunday we'll at 10.30 in the morning, we'll have Sunday school. You, if you desire, can come with us and learn more from the, regarding the project of God for our lives. If you desire pray for our life, raise your hand so that we may go to you and therefore give you the proper assistance.